Hello, hello. We are here with our very good friend, Professor Paul Pepe, who is professor at the University of, uh, of Texas. But uh, he, is, uh, he has been uh, a friend of ours for many, many years. As he, and he is an expert on CPR, and he has always been very imaginative. And this time at the American College of uh, Emergency Physicians, he presented his new system of neuroprotective CPR using a head-up CPR. So, Paul, thank you for being with us. Can you tell us a little bit about it? It's always great, and it's wonderful to be with you. And, uh, and I have to say, I'm representing a, actually an international team of many scientists who have been working at this in the laboratory as well as in the field for many years. And this is coming to fruition now. And uh, some of it we stumbled upon, some of it uh, we thought about. And uh, so I think it's a real privilege to be here. So do you want me to mention what this is uh, briefly? Yeah, 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 please go ahead. First of all, uh, in many countries, and particularly in the United States, for example, the survival rates are very low uh, for cardiac arrest still. It remains about the same, yeah. less than 10%. But uh, what's interesting is that uh, if you look at it, most of the patients who we deal with are either flatline asystole or what they say, what they call it, pulseless electrical activity, PEA. But um, it turns out then their survival rates are very low for some obvious reasons that yeah. you no. Know. Yeah. Here's the thing. What we found was that CPR as we do it today, um, it's obviously life-saving. Uh, and I've been the biggest proponent of it, especially for, for, for um, the average citizen to learn it. But we found out what happens is you compress on the chest, you are setting an arterial pressure wave up, but you're also back pressuring on the vein side. Yeah, so yeah exactly. And so they kind of collide up there. And so it's not as efficient as it should be. So simply put, we came up with concepts over the last few years where we pull blood out of the brain and into the chest again, and you get better flow up there. One thing we did, the first step was the, and we published this in the Lancet, a clinical trial of an impedance threshold device, which yeah. is an airway yeah. device that I won't go into detail, but helps pull blood out of the brain, gives a little extra tug of blood, and then combined with an active compression decompression device, like a toilet plunger of sorts. Yeah. And then the two of those uh, gave us, you know, a 50% improvement in neurological, in, uh, neurological intact outcomes. Um, but <laughs> here's where it got very interesting. We learned when we were asking the question, should we put a patient downhill when we're going down yeah. the stairwell or uphill? And um, the answer is we worked that out in the lab was actually uphill. But you don't want to raise it too fast. So it's very important to do this right, that first you prime the pump with those other two things that enhance circula circulation, those other two adjuncts. And now we found as we gradually elevate the head over two minutes and we carefully work this out. So it yeah. was one minute, two minutes, three minutes. But so we do priming with the other two devices for about that we know work and had a clinical trial and all that um, for about one or two, well, about two minutes. And then we raise the head gradually with an automatic device over two minutes and we're getting near normal blood flows. We are in the laboratory for sure. For example, normal CPR only gives you 15 to 20% of normal yeah. Yeah. Pressure. yeah. If you go with the N, the ACD and ITD, you're getting up to 40, 45%. And then with this, we're- In which animal is it? Say that again, sir. In, in which animals was it? Oh, this is a, a swine model we did. Okay. But the, the good news is that in humans, we it, it, uh, I think there's great evidence that we're doing the same thing. For example, an entitled CO2, normally we would get with standard conventional CPR. Yeah be about, I don't know, about 15, 20, yeah, maybe yeah, yeah, 25 yeah, yeah. Uh, end tidal CO2. Um, now we're getting with the ITD, ACD, we're going closer to 30, 35. And with this, we're even with asystole patients, we're getting averages in the 50s. We have to adjust the ventilatory rates as far Yeah, yeah, that's great. So it's very interesting. So we're, we have that. And more importantly, we're having people who are waking up. Yeah. Uh, during uh, their CPR, during the CPR, we have to have a we have to have a sedation protocol, and moreover, um, they remember things almost verbatim. So we're seeing more CPC ones, I believe, than CPC twos, and we're studying that right now, and I'll report on that later on. 
The other thing that's interesting, by the way, you use the term neuroprotective CPR. And the irony is that one of the patients we saved, a young man in his 40s, who ironically was a person who retrieved organs in brain dead people. And uh, that was his job in the healthcare field. And he said, yeah. and he was down for 30 minutes of CPR, came back totally normal. And he goes, why are, this, this is neuroprotective CPR. So he, he, the patient we saved actually coined the term, but remember, this is it. So it's a bundle of several devices. Uh, you still have to do quality CPR. You still have, you cannot overzealously ventilate at first. You have to basically use all these things in the right order. If you yeah. don't do it right, you could be harmful. If you do it right though, it's dramatically better. I'll give okay. you, uh, in, in terms of results, by the way, uh, someone asked me, so for example, the, we, we want to know how fast can people get there? And in terms of the compared, the groups we compared to were the high performing systems that were in NIH trials. Yeah. And um, they had their CPR quality measured and so on to get into the study. So we, we purposely chose the best case scenario to use as controls. And it turned out that if you just did a raw you know, comparison, it, it was like a three to one odds ratio and significant already in yeah. just collecting the numbers. When you yeah. actually get a propensity matching, uh, perfectly propensity matching, because we know all the things that affect outcome, it was like fourfold. But we, if it was, that was all comers though. If you actually looked at the group that got it within 11 minutes and half of the patients could get this device on within 11 minutes, we had a tenfold to 11 fold uh, odds ratio. And in fact, if you did yeah, it- Yeah, but this is not randomized, that uh, one. You... No, no, and because uh, we don't have enough numbers to do it, but we, we know we've already done the randomized clinical trial in terms of the ACD and ITD. Yeah, yeah. This is now just adding on you know, something, by the way, all these are cleared by our FDA for use. And those, so people are beginning to use these. Yeah. But here's my emphasis. My emphasis is that the patients who get it on within say 16 minutes yeah. uh, had 13 fold better uh, outcomes when you use a propensity scoring, for example. Yeah. Uh, and, we're, and we're seeing the clinical signs that I told you about, right? But what's really interesting, I think, is that the earlier we got it on, the better it was. That's yeah. You know, first heard that it went, of course, but what we found out was the systems that were EMS systems that were using this and were able to routinely get it on in seven or eight minutes were like the neighborhood fire truck or the neighborhood, you know, anybody nearby. And if they could come right away and they have, they would have a pit crew approach. They actually had a, a, a backpack that they opened up and there, all the equipment's there that put the patient on. So it's not just getting there fast, but it's how fast you get things done and yeah. they have better outcomes. So we're, we're saying three things. One, if you're going to do this, do it right. Okay. Uh, with all the things. Have the machine, doing. have the instruments. Yeah. And, and in the right sequence, right. In the right timing. Number two, um, you know, uh, don't do it if you can't do all those things. Three, put it on the, the first in. Whoever can be either the fastest uh, is the best way to go it and so on. And uh, and then finally, uh, become part of our registry and uh, demonstrate. But you need to have the equipment. Huh? You cannot improvise. You must have the right equipment. A absolutely. And and I have no, what's the word, uh, conflict of interest. I don't get any money from any of the companies. I, I'm the one that just evaluates these things. Yeah, sure. Uh, clinically. And, is, uh, but the answer is yes. Is, 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 is there any hurdle, any, any problem, any side effect? No, the only thing is that we've shown in the laboratory, if you just raise the head up right away, that's a problem. But we've also have done work on ECMO that if you raise the head, you know, once you get these good flows, you can raise the head gradually, yeah. you have better outcomes, yeah. you have intracranial pressure problems. And more importantly is we actually did it in the laboratory. Again, you stumble upon things. And we found was that after we resuscitated the animals and we we're getting ready to de-instrument them, um, yeah. Raise them. We found cerebral oximetry went back to normal, where it had been sort of hyper normal after the resuscitation. So I said, "Hey, put that head up again." You know, and we could see we could reproduce that you actually post resuscitation had much better flow if you had. Very that. interesting. Yeah. And the okay. final com the final comment I would make with you. Yeah. Is that Very final. You and I are doing this interview sitting up, right? Why are yeah. we doing low? Why are we laying down? So we have better. But well, your bed is not far away. You could go in <laughs> bed and do the same. <laughs> well, what I'm saying is, uh, is that the human condition is much better when blood is draining out of the brain and into the heart. Okay, so then when you have yeah, blood, right. Now show us your T-shirt. What's written on the on your pillow? Uh, uh, well, as you know, can you show it to us? 
now that I'm no longer a department chairman, I'm pretty insignificant, right? <laughs> ah, very good. I hope maybe after this, maybe after this presentation, my uh, you are my... no longer significant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, I'm hoping after okay. this talk, I'll become significant again, right? <laughs> so that's right, absolutely. This is very, very interesting, Paul, and we are looking forward to hearing yes. more about it. Many yes, thanks. Is. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And then, bye bye. Bye bye.